Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. The term lung cancer, or bronchiogenic carcinoma, refers to malignancies that originate in the airways or pulmonary parenchyma. This sketch will present an overview of the risk factors, clinical manifestations, and histopathology of non-small cell and small cell lung cancers, which comprise about 95% of the cancer types you'll find in the lung. And because of all this talk about large cell and small cell, we're headed to prison. And not just any prison, my friends. Welcome to The Rock. On June 12, 1962, three inmates, Clarence Anglin, John Anglin, and Frank Morris, made the first and last successful attempt to escape Alcatraz Island. It's gone down in history as one of the most intricate prison escapes ever devised. But before we get into that story, a few statistics regarding the inmate population here on the island. In the U.S., Lung cancer occurs in more than 200,000 patients annually and causes over 160,000 deaths in that same amount of time. So, although it's not necessarily the most common type of cancer, lung cancer is still the leading cause of cancer-related death. In women, breast cancer is the most common, but lung cancer is the most deadly. And in men, prostate cancer is the most common, but Again, mortality from lung cancer is much higher. Before we dive into lung tumors, you should know that by far the most common cancers found in the lungs aren't even made of lung tissue. Most cancers are actually metastases from other parts of the body, especially from the breast, colon, and kidneys. In this scene, however, we're going to focus on the most common primary tumors of the lung, small cell, adeno, squamous cell, and large cell carcinoma. Okay, so as you can see, the prison staff is on high alert because they received an anonymous tip that the prison break is planned for today. Well, most of the staff is on high alert because it looks like a couple guards have found some time for their usual leisure activity. High stakes dice. Ah, yeah. You should recognize the dice, by the way. Those risky red dice are our recurring symbol for risk factors. And if you can't tell already, by the ashtrays and smoke filling the room, smoking tobacco products is the most important risk factor for the development of lung cancer. In fact, about 90% of all lung cancer is considered attributable to a person's status as a past or current smoker. So remember, the most important part of lung cancer prevention involves preventing people from starting to smoke or helping those who already smoke to stop. All right, so obviously, smoking is the big risk factor to remember here. But there are a few others to keep in mind as well. Radiation therapy to the chest, for example, can increase the risk of developing lung cancer in patients who are being treated for other primary cancers, such as breast cancer and Hodgkin lymphoma. And that's why we've included our recurring radiation symbol here, on the microwave in the back. Whether it's from interstitial lung disease, adverse medication effects, or environmental toxins, Pulmonary fibrosis also increases a patient's risk of lung cancer. Just take a look at the fibrotic, though meticulously pruned, pulmonary bonsai tree on the break room table. Remember that jailbreak I mentioned earlier? Well, unbeknownst to the guards here, it's already well underway. Though it looks like it's not off to a great start. As he breathes in that very much up-to-code 1960s wall insulation, remember all those environmental toxins that can increase lung cancer risk, such as asbestos. I know what you're thinking. Oh yeah, asbestos. That causes mesothelioma, right? That nasty plural thing? Asbestos exposure is the only known risk factor for malignant mesothelioma, yes. But bronchogenic carcinoma is actually drastically more common. Add smoking on top of that, you're talking about a synergistic effect leading to an almost 60-fold increased cancer risk. Keep other workplace exposures in mind as well, like radon, metals, and aromatic hydrocarbons, not to mention industrial chemicals like chromium, cadmium, beryllium, and arsenic. Always bring a face mask to a prison escape. I think the lesson is here. So what kind of clue should you look for? to know that lung cancer has broken out of its cell and is invading your patient's lung tissue? First, you should know that not only has Alcatraz prison been around for a long time, 
so have a few of its oldest officers. The peak incidence of lung cancer occurs in the fifth and sixth decades of life, slightly on the older side. The majority of patients with lung cancer have advanced disease at the time of clinical presentation. So, although a significant proportion of lung cancers are found incidentally on imaging, a majority of patients are going to present to your clinic with symptoms. These symptoms may result from local effects of the tumor, from regional spread to tissues, or from distant effects. We're talking perineoplastic hormones, which we'll illustrate later on in the sketch. Patients with lung cancer classically present with progressive dyspnea. See how out of breath that guy is? And weight loss, as evidenced by his ridiculously thin physique. Decreased appetite, hence the food tray falling to the ground, and chest pain, especially in younger patients. 